So how smartly did they use the front of newspaper? The front line is like it's bad, it's this, and then on the on the very end, very hidden, they did publish the true information about you no, know, it's like it's nothing proven about psychosis, nothing say about sex and cannabis and all that. Yes, yes, the truth <laughs> is in in uh, small print. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about uh, 420 High School, San Rafael. Yeah, do you know where that is? In near San Francisco? Right on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So you have, it's kind of like, it's a suburb, really, of San Francisco, in fact. Because uh, the time it takes to get to San Rafael from San Francisco is, it it takes less time to do that than it takes to get from, say, Vancouver to Richmond. Oh, okay. So, or Vancouver to Surrey, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, San Rafael was the uh, winter home of the Grateful Dead. And the Grateful Dead was the house band to Ken Kesey and the, um, the pranksters, the merry pranksters, who reintroduced LSD or, or introduced LSD to most of the United States. Oh, wow. And, and so this house band yep. to the pranksters who uh, performed at the first uh, uh, acid trips, um, they, uh, the acid tests that the pranksters gave in San Francisco while LSD was still legal. Uh, yeah, these, these, uh, this house band had this mm-hmm. kind of subculture, um, cultural and economic relationship with drugs. Mm-hmm. And everybody at San Rafael kind of grew up in that, milieu and and actually for the longest time even before the 60s even in the 50s and i think in the 40s uh that marin county and san rafael were famous for people growing pot and beatniks and you know the the jazz guys growing pot there too (laughs) so anyway this 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 kind of pot town right on the outskirts of san francisco Mm -hmm. had all these kids growing up and totally token up and smoking up and uh these kids these teenagers had a code that they used for hey let's go and get high after school what time is after school 420 so 420 is actually uh, created by teens and not a lot of people realize that because at all these 420 events no teens are allowed you know or most of them in vancouver they are yeah Uh, they're welcome to toke up with us at 420 we throw out joints to the crowd we don't (laughs) id uh, people to see what age they are, but uh, yeah, it's a teenage created event, um, teenage created concept, uh, uh, a, a brand, a uh, code, if you will, and so um, that's important to remember. Yeah, isn't wasn't there like they have to harvest because some of uh, someone's cousin was working in the U.S. as a working for U.S. Marshal, and uh, then they have to go and harvest it. No, what what happened was uh, they originally said, let's go get high by the Louis uh, Pasteur statue right outside our high school. And yeah. then let's go look for this missing garden, this hidden garden of marijuana. And they used to get high by the, the statue and then go look for this garden every day at 420 right after school. And that's that's how the, they were called the, uh, the Waldos because they always hang in by this wall in, by their high school. So they were yeah. called the Waldos and they invented this language so that they could talk about it and, and um, kind of refer to it without anyone knowing what they were talking about. So and, what's the history of this in, in Vancouver? Like when from, from it in Vancouver it started? Okay. So in 1995, mm-hmm. uh, after Hemp BC had been open for a year, okay. um, there was some deadheads, some followers of the Grateful Dead who knew the code knew what 420 meant and they said well we should have an event that is associated with april 20th because april 20th is 420 and mark emery was like "Nah, that's that's silly what are you doing and they said oh we just want to uh you know take the day and instead of sell things in the store go to the park next to the store and give speeches and maybe play some music and smoke pot in, in the park and Mark, being a businessman and a capitalist, was like, no, that's totally self-indulgent. You can't do that. And they're like, well, 
if we go ahead and do it anyway, are you going to fire us? And he said, well, no. So they went ahead and did it anyway, and they borrowed. Uh, they got some money for uh, a sound system, and they plugged in. You know, they got some extra extension cords, and they plugged in um, the power from the store and ran a bunch of extension cords over to the park. And that's how they had the first 420. And so Mark was kind of reluctantly sucked into doing this thing. And it just grew and grew and grew because people want to gather and smoke pot together uh, and, and celebrate cannabis. So that's how th that in, has become a farmer's market that, uh, you know, over 100,000 people participate in every year and has yeah. been going on every year since 95. Watching documentaries like Berkeley in the 60s. I mean, you stand on the shoulders of giants, you know? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely.